Hi guys, and welcome back to Macaroon. I posted a poll on my community page recently on which Pokemon you'd like to see as sock plushies, and Pikachu was the clear winner. I kind of expected that, but I was quite surprised by how big the margin was. I started playing Pokemon Go again with my daughter just to get out of the house, but it's rekindled my obsession for the game. So there's going to be quite a lot of Pokemon inspired DIYs coming soon. So to get started with Pikachu, I ordered this set of fluffy socks from Amazon, which I've used in a previous video. I love the bright colors, which are kind of hard to find in shops, and they're great for making all kinds of characters. This one also comes in a pretty cool vacuum-packed bag, which is flat and light to transport, but once you open it, everything puffs up again. Start with one of the yellow socks and turn it inside out. Then press it flat like this, with the heel part facing down. This time, I'm stretching the fabric out like this to get the sock as symmetrical as possible. For this DIY, it's quite important to get the right proportions, and this step makes it easier to draw on the outlines. I'm starting with the center of the head first, and then extending the ears slightly diagonally upwards. The tips of both ears should be touching the edge of the sock. Then draw the inward part of the ears and the remaining bit of the head. So this is what you want to end up with, and the bottom curve of the heel should form a rough oval shape with the top of the head. Compared to a regular sock plushie, this outline contains a lot of sharp angles and tiny corners, so you want to sew it using very short stitches. The smaller the stitch, the more detail it can pick up. And as always, I'm going to use a back stitch, which is basically one stitch forward and then half a stitch back. This overlaps the thread and it creates a very strong seam which won't pop open when the sock is stretched. The completed head should look something like this, and you can see a faint outline on the back as well. Now carefully cut everything out, trying to get as close to the thread as possible but without touching it. It's important to get this tiny dip here which forms the recognizable shape of Pikachu's head. Now cut a hole in the toe part of the sock and turn everything the right way round. Use a pen or chopstick to help you poke the ears out very carefully. I'm going to stuff the ears very lightly just to help them hold their shape. You don't want to use too much stuffing, otherwise the shape will change and it won't look like Pikachu. Once the ears are done, grab a handful of stuffing and push this into the face. A large part of making sock plushies is the stuffing technique, and you can create very different body shapes just by changing the amount of stuffing. So once again, I don't want to overstuff the face, and I'm just experimenting a bit until I have the typical Pikachu head design. This is my lazy sock plushie method, which combines the head and body into one sock. However, if you want to make a more detailed plushie, similar to the Pokemon Sitting Cuties collection, then you can always create the head and body separately. Now just trim off any extra fabric around the base, and sew a running stitch around the opening. Pull it tight to close the hole, and sew another running stitch to secure everything. Tie a knot and exit the needle somewhere else on the body. This hides everything perfectly, and you don't have any dangling pieces of loose thread on your plushie. To make the arms, just grab the extra bit of sock and draw two oval shapes. I always do this right by the edge, because you save yourself some sewing if you use the natural outline of the sock. Flip these the right way round and stuff them lightly to get arms. Then ladder stitch them onto the body. This is basically sewing one stitch on the arm and then one on the body, which hides the thread extremely well and makes your plushie look a lot more professional. If the arm is sticking out like this, then you can simply press it flat and then continue ladder stitching downwards until you have your desired position. Next up is the tail, and we're going to use the second sock for this. Don't forget to turn it inside out first. You might not think this is necessary for a flat detail like this, but there is actually a difference in fabric smoothness. So whenever possible, always try to use the correct side of the sock facing outwards. I drew on this shape, which is a simplified version of Pikachu's tail. It has less zigzags, which means less sewing and also less stress trying to turn the shape around. If you're not confident about drawing this freehand, then just pause the video, turn up the brightness, and trace the shape on a piece of paper to make a template. Now flip everything around, and make sure all the sharp corners are visible. 
To make the feet, I'm going to use the easiest ball method, which doesn't require any backstitching. Simply cut out two circles like this and sew a running stitch along the edge. Place a ball of stuffing to the center and then pull it shut to create a ball. Then crisscross some more stitches to close the opening and you can attach this directly onto the body. There are several ways to make fur details and I'm going to go with soft pastel dust. I like how this method is very realistic looking and also the quickest to do. However, the downside is that the color can transfer into other areas and it will fade if you wash the plush. If you want a more permanent design, then you can sew on fabric strips similar to what I did for Pusheen's back stripes in this video here. Or you can cut out shapes from felt fabric and glue those on. I'm applying the pastel dust to the tail before sewing, which ensures that all the sides are covered. Then I'm lattice stitching it onto the body. If the pastel dust has smudged a bit, then you can lift the pigment off using tape or wash the area very carefully with a bit of soap and water. As a final touch, I used some Stronghold hairspray which helps to seal the pigments and prevents it from rubbing off. Now take some black felt fabric and cut out details for ears. I'm just doing this freehand and then sticking it into place. Then I'm cutting out two circles and a triangular shape for the mouth. Using acrylic paint on felt is a great way to get very precise details, such as manga style eyes and mouths. I'm using a toothpick and a thin brush to paint everything on. This part reminded me a lot of my Jigglypuff needle felt tutorial, where I painted the eyes onto thumbtacks. I actually consider that method here as well, but because it's a plushie, I decided it wasn't a good idea to use anything with sharp metal inside. Another important thing when making Pikachu is to get the correct size and positioning of the facial features. It would be a huge shame to get this far and then have a plushie that doesn't look quite right because the eyes are too far apart or too high up. So definitely arrange all of your pieces beforehand and check that they look correct. I ended up trimming the mouth a bit because I felt it was also a bit too large. For the final step, you have many options for making cheeks, such as using felt fabric, pastel dust, needle felt or paint. I happen to have this red sock, so I decided to cut out small circles and sew them on. These raw fabric edges can drop a lot of fluff, so be sure to sew them on using lots of small stitches. The more you sew, the less fluff is going to fall out. Once you're done, exit the needle from behind the tail, which is another great place to hide loose ends. And now Pikachu is done. This method can be easily adapted to make many other Pokemon as well. Thank you so much for watching and happy crafting. Isabel was actually with me when I was filming the final scene and she really wanted to help. So here's her hand squishing it for the camera. Squish, squish, squish.